Ah, hello friends. Thank you for joining me here in the beautiful Cheshire countryside where it is a little bit chilly this morning um, and there's a bit of noise going on over there. I don't know, some demolition or something, but I'm hoping that doesn't disturb what we're doing here today too much. But what are we doing here today? Well, over the next few days, I'm planning to get this thing properly back on the road. It occurred to me that um, priorities do change and um, in order to live you need money. So initially what the plan was, was when this thing was ready, was to sell it. Now, <laughs> it's now ready, almost, the brakes failed the other day when I was doing this. Don't worry about that, I've got some parts on their way and we'll get it all fixed and then it can go off to the detailers and the trim place. But the initial thoughts on the shakedown are that this is one of the best things I've ever driven in my life and you may have to pry it out of my cold dead hands. I just can't bring myself to sell it, it I just don't think it's going to happen. <sighs> Bit annoying, I, I was hoping that I would not get on well with this car when it was done and I'm getting on with it like a house on fire. It's, uh, it's so cool. So I thought, well look, I did all that hard work, you know, a year and a half restoration, so I'm gonna keep it. But that means there's now eight cars here and something's gotta go. I've gotta get some cash in. It obviously can't be this one because I need this for undercover operations. I just don't think we're finished with this one yet either. In a similar fashion to the Mini, you may have to prize this one out of my cold dead hands. This one, I'm not ready to see it go either. I want to take this to the Nürburgring and there's more work I want to do to it. No, no, there is a car under here, I promise. Um, it just needs finishing. And the idea behind this one was that I was never going to sell it either. So that's out the question. But Ben, that's only seven cars. What about the eighth? Well, the eighth one I only bought yesterday on eBay. <laughs> I need to stay off that bloody website. And I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. It's the next left for dead. It's quite exciting. You thought that was exotic. Well, wait till you've seen this one. So. What's that left me with? Well, this thing here. This is the only car at the moment that is surplus to requirements. Do you know what I mean? I, I everything else has got a purpose and a place. This one though, I did, want, I did have aspirations for this thing, but surplus to requirements. So it's gotta go. But before I can just send it down the road, it needs a scheme of work. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna get this thing ready so whoever buys it can just turn up and drive it home. Wouldn't that be cool? So what does it need? I don't know if you're like me, but I do find that writing a list is, uh, just makes things a little bit clearer and allows you to go through work on stuff a little bit better. So this is what I know is wrong with the car. So the wipers, I think it needs a wiper mirror. Uh, the indicators have stopped working, so we're gonna have to look into that. I've got the feeling it's the stalk because the hazards still work, uh, which I did need. <coughs> the clutch 
is still not right so I'm going to send some more fluid back up it and see if we can make that a little bit better. The passenger side wing mirror is non-existent so we could do with a new one of those. Um, the bodywork, you know, it could do with a bit of a sort of a buff up and a shine and I do have something that's like a little bit of a trick up my sleeve um, which I'm going to say, I've never, I've never really used this sort of method before but I'm going to have a go at it and see what sort of results I get so that's exciting. Um, it needs the interior putting back together and the doors, you know, making them work and all that sort of stuff on the buttons and things because you can't get into the passenger side so that's a little bit annoying if you're a passenger. The two front outriggers, they are the only sort of bad bit of rust on the car um, so I need to sort of sort those out really, strengthen them up, do something with them. Um, make it a bit more legal on the road you know. Brakes, now as you can see here I did spend quite a bit of time the other day which is why it's up on the ramp with all the wheels off renewing most things on the braking system in fact I think pretty much everything apart from the few pipes have now been changed so I'm hoping we've got solid brakes but I've not been able to test it yet um, but for now I think that is the first job that we can tick off the list but I won't do that until we've tested it. And then you've got the engine. Now this engine as you saw when we saw this car last it, it wasn't very well but since then I've been moving it around doing a couple of bits with the engine just having a little look here and there and it's sounding a little bit better however I, I still don't think it's right I still think it's missing and something's going on and we just need to sort of get stuck into that so we will spend a little bit of time pouring over the engine and just seeing exactly what's going on in there and maybe sort of take a few things off and just sort of see what we can see and you know try and diagnose if it's running on all cylinders and all this sort of stuff and then we know at least that if someone does buy this car they can you know use it and drive it and the engine's not going to give them too many troubles right then so put a new few new things on brakes wise there i had to cut this thing off over there and it's only sort of temporarily held on over there because you need to refix the bracket to the backing plate of there and just like a few little jobs but that's stuff the new owner can take care of because it's quite simple jobs but you do need to strip things down to get things off or do it in situ or whatever you can do but everything else even though it's very sort of dirty and grubby it's looking okay this is the sort of main bit of worry over here and is what we're going to get stuck into with the outriggers because this thing even though this is solid all the way along it needs to be properly attached to that so it needs pushing up there and then welding up with everything on it so we'll probably just put a big l-shaped plate across there i'm hoping to be able to do this with the body on so we're gonna we're going to have a little look into that and see you know if it's going to be possible without burning the thing to the ground I know a lot of you did want to see underneath this car when we first got it so we will do it this one here as well has got a couple of little tucks so we're going to do something with that as well make that look a little bit nicer everything else oh look it's had a core plug replaced at some point that's great to see isn't it brakes are all right you know they're quite serviceable they'll come back to life you know it's nice and sort of slick and oily and stuff under there which is fun gonna have a little play with that later on all the chassis and stuff looks really good and solid just needs a proper wire brush and a bit of a paint get this thing back to life all the brake pipes and everything look really good condition they look like they you know weren't replaced that long ago only other bit i found was on this this bit here that probably needs replacing but i think it's bolt on that everything else just needs a good wire brush and a paint you know depends how far you want to go with it you know you could take the whole body off and get it blasted and all sorts of stuff couldn't you you could really make a nice job of it but again it depends what you want to do exhausts look fine don't look too old now with the clutch i don't think it's leaking or anything i don't think we need a new slave cylinder 
the fluid is still where it is when I did it initially. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this old beautiful thing, fill it full of fluid, and we're going to try and push it back up through like we did initially and um, maybe did a little bit too much and we'll see if we can make the clutch a little bit better without changing the slave cylinder because I want to try and save a bit of money while I'm doing this you know I don't want the uh, you know and, and the new owner needs to have something to do don't they can't do everything right don't spill it don't spill it That'll do, pig. That'll do. Right then. Just pop that down there. Yeah. Get that back on and we'll see if this works. Because it'd be good if it did, because then that's potentially brake and clutch sorted straight away. Okay. Right, what do we do now? Uh <laughs> <sighs> God, what monkey tighten that up? Oh, ah, it's dripping. Catch it in that tray. Yeah, 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 okay. Right, let's just prime this bad boy. Right, can't see any leaks coming out of that, so... Let's push it back up into the system. I don't know what we're going to... How can I tell if it's coming out at the top? Should we just like give it a minute? Get that ready to tighten everything back up. Got to use a spanner, actually. So, using the clutch uh, feeling stick, it feels real nice and tight. So, I'm hoping we have done the job there, but again, can't tell until it's moving. So, let's crack on with the engine and we'll get it moving. It's like December. What is going on? It's, it's just hammering it down and it's, it's so cold, man. What's going on? Right then, this thing. So what we should do first is just pull the air cleaner off and then we're gonna try and get her running as she is. And when it's idling or ticking over or whatever it's gonna do, we'll pull the HT leads off one by one. And then we, oh, don't forget to put the cap back on that as well. And then we'll be able to identify if it's misfiring on a cylinder. If it is, we can pull the spark plug, check what that looks like or that type of thing. If that looks all okay, we can pull the rocker covers off and we'll see what's going on where that cylinder is misfiring. So exciting times, let's crack on with that. I remember I was having a couple of problems with this bonnet not closing properly, so I just thought I'd have a little look. And it turns out that I think this whole thing here had, had bent. Now, it does now shut properly and the lines are okay. Now this is a bit up on this side, so the hinges could do with a little bit of adjustment, but I think what it is more likely is that it's starting to maybe separate a bit. I don't know. But let's see if the bonnet patch works. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. That was a job off the list that wasn't even on the list. Just not the panel. I can actually see some rubber stoppers at the back there that's going to stop it, and one there that's going to stop it going down as much. So there's probably a bit of adjustment going on there anyway. But for now, let's hook the power pack up, squirt some petrol down there, and we'll see if she goes, you know. Now there's roughly, I don't know, maybe 30 quid's worth of petrol in there, so we're just going to Give a little helping hand there.
Now I can see that she's pulling fuel in from there, so we shouldn't need this now. Ah, but we did! We did need it! Again, I've got to mention it, it's absolutely freezing in here today, so... And I don't think the auto choke works on this, I think it's auto choke, and I don't think that works either, so... Get a bit of heat into it, you know. just learned with that very short diagnostics session then so I just pulled the HT leads off while it was running with my gloves on still got shocked maybe 400 times but that's fine I'm used to it I mm. uh, I found out that the second cylinder number two there 
Uh, if it is cylinder number two, one, two, three, five, I don't know which way they go, but that cylinder, um, when I took the H2 lead off, which was sparking, sparking really well, I got no uh, change in what the engine was doing. So that means that there's something wrong with that cylinder there. Now what I'm hoping, which would be the best outcome here, is we've just got a bent push rod or something like that, something quite simple and we can just straighten that out and, and we'll have that cylinder firing again. What I would like to do though is um, pull this off, pull the rocker cover off, have a little bit of a look in there and see what we're dealing with. Everywhere I turn, this car looks like hurt me in some way. Just want to scuff my knuckles or something. It's never happy when I'm happy. And everything's in the way. Why is it all in the way? You know, I'm probably going to have to take the alternator off here. Why is it being like that? I'm going to have to take the bonnet off just to see what I'm doing. Fortunately though, it's only little cross head screws and they are coming off quite nicely. One thing I really like about this car is that it, it, it's very original. It doesn't look like it's been messed about with an awful lot. It looks pretty much, you know, in terms of the engine bay, they haven't just blanked a load of things off and cut a load of stuff off and all that sort of stuff. It does look fairly complete and nice. The only thing they have uh, blanked off is the water flow to the heater matrix inside. Um, but it's summer soon, so. Don't need that, do we? Remember, when you're messing about the back of alternators as well, to disconnect the battery, which as you can see over there, I haven't done. Because I'm an expert with this. Don't know what that's for, but I can't be important. Right, is this gonna clock now? Am I gonna lose any more blood? Oh God, thank God, get out of the way. Stupid fucking thing. Right, all to access this one screw. Right. Oh, it's not very stuck on. That's uh, probably a good sign, I think, maybe. Ignore all that white stuff in there, I'm sure that's that's fine. Ah, it's normal, it's normal to have it full of white stuff. Okay. Lots of slick oil stuff. Let's just have a little feel. I think we've definitely found our culprit there. So there should be like a tiny little bit of play in these, that's why there's adjustment on them and those two there could probably be adjusted if I could, if I could be bothered. But this one here is uh, flopping around like a dick in a shirt sleeve. So uh, I've got the feeling this one's bent and that noise is what you can hear when the engine's going brrrm. So uh, yeah, that's probably bent. So I've got to try and get that out of there, straighten it out, and put it back in. Let me show you. So we thought it was this cylinder here that was having the uh, misfire, because when I took the uh, spark plug lead off, it was no dice, nothing happened. Now, as you can see, very solid there. Only a tiny bit of movement in there, a little bit more movement in there, but again, not a lot and those two down there are all very nice. This one though, whoa, whoa, look at me go. So that one is pretty bollocks. So we're gonna to need to pull that off and see what it's all about.
So just come back for a bit of lunch with the family and uh, well, they've all come back here. Partly because these hanging baskets that were outside have started to look a bit sorry for themselves. So we've been, because we went for lunch in the garden centre, we've got all new stuff. I don't know what any of this is. Look, there's yellow and purple ones, white ones. Very nice. And now my mum and my auntie are busy. What are you doing? Just taking off the, there's a thick layer of moss and all the, um, the dead stuff from last year. Maybe. Uh, dead leaves as well. Um, nice. So we're going to take off a layer off the top and then put some of this yeah. peat free. It's, it's moisture, special compost to put some back. Perfect. This. I'll take this for our compost to you. Oh, fantastic. See, it's just, it's all working out so well, isn't it? So just uh, not more to do. And then we're going to put some flowers in. And then in. I'll put some, well, yeah. They look nice then, won't they? They look nice here, ready for the sunshine to come. And uh, I'm just going to fill up my little bird feeder because I've picked up some bird seeds, so I'll get that done now as well. <laughs> Just come out to have a look at the panard because it's making a couple of funny noises. And um what's going on here? <laughs> Bloody hell. You you're a young girl when you first oh, first got in there, didn't you? <laughs> what do you think of it in there? Is it nice? No. <laughs> I like the colour, but oh, that is terrible. <laughs> yeah, more amazing help from the family. You can't get into that door. Uh, you have to do it from the other side. But they're helping me with all this stuff here. Not that I've got any problem with getting all that, but they're less afraid of spiders than me. You're a, um, <laughs> You're a massive wimp. I am a massive wimp. Do you want all that stuff moving or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to press that button on the other thing to get the... Um, Oh, just get in and oh God! Yeah, yeah, go, go, yeah. We can open that door. Let's have a go at that. Wait. Yeah, go on, lift that up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is clever. No, I'm gonna get the now. This could come. God, can you guys come around more often? Ben, look in there. Look at that. 
it up. Do you want some of that? Oh Jesus. Do you want a bit? Oh Jesus, this is this is like my oh, worst God. nightmare in here. God, what a bloody kerfuffle. Nice of them to come around and sort that out for me. So anyway, let's put some gloves on and try and get this push one out, eh? Quite slippy. Covered in oil. Ah, right. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? So she's straight. No sign of getting bashed around either. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? Mm. Mm -hmm. That is not ideal, that's not... What I did notice though is while I was just undoing the uh, nut there to get a little bit more space is that all the ones that have been set there's quite a few more threads down than this one so maybe it had potentially worked itself loose maybe maybe not i don't know um and that's what was causing it to sort of rattle around you know because it's not bent so maybe if i set it to the same as the others it might work i don't know uh, right okay we'll put that one back in now i'm we know that the misfire was on cylinder one i didn't check the spark plug so i think we should probably do that now i mean there was still a big you know, sort of metal on metal knocking noise, which I think was still that. So it's not going to be the spark plug. Well, you know, there could still be other things as well. Let's have a look. Why is it never the first one that you try? Why is it always the second? Why can't they have just made that like a little bit more? You know, I ask a lot of questions, don't I? Why don't I just bloody design a car then, eh? If I think I'm so good at it. Okay. So, we're very oily and grimy. And there is bits on that, so... Definitely doesn't look like a cylinder that's been firing properly. Letting stuff in. So, uh, that's interesting. What's the clear tag on that there? So, just turning the engine over now and just watching what's going on with all of these. So far, so good. You could run the car just like that and watch what's happening with them and see where the sort of clanging noise is coming from but well sounds a little bit extreme to me that so what that's potentially just told me is it, it, it could well be that the clearance for this valve on number one cylinder was just, you know, for the uh, locker arm there was just a bit too wild. So I'm just going to nip them up, really. And we'll see if that gets rid of the ding, 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 ding noise. Just a couple of others I'm just going to tidy up as well. I'm not going crazy, I just want to put a little bit more pressure on them. Well, hopefully quiet the engine down as such anyway. It's actually looking a lot better that. Um, right, let's just try and roll the engine over again. Annoying bloody fuel pipes in the way there. But whatever.
So what I've just done there is I've just essentially adjusted all the clearances. There's a tiny little bit of play, but not much. Span it round on the crank just to make sure that nothing's binding up. And then I've just cranked it on the start motor and just watched and made sure that they were all, you know, okay and they were all working as well as they can. Now that seems pretty good now. I think we should throw everything back together, fire up and see if she runs, you know, and we'll clean that spark plug up before we stick it back in and hopefully it'll be singing on six again. Should that be like that? Yeah, whatever. Okay. So place your bets now if you think this rocker cover gasket that's been on this car for about 400 years is going to work at holding any oil in. My guess it's probably not. But well, that's the job for the next owner again, isn't it? No? I'll, do the, I'll do the basic bits. You can fine tune it afterwards. You know what I mean? That's fair, isn't it? Whoever designed this bonnet like this, honestly, they, they, they do want. We do want the garden set on fire. God, it's like brand new. I keep looking for like the fourth spark plug and like the, the fourth spark plug wire, but it's uh, it's only V6, isn't it? I keep reminding myself of that because I seem to be working on valve trains of V Ford engines quite often. Right, so that's probably gummed up to hell, which is why it wasn't starting so well before or affecting it. So we will change that, but for now, before I stick the. Should that be attached to something? Maybe. Uh, we'll just see if she goes quickly. Get that out of the way. And see what it sounds like. Ain't got no gas in it. sounds a lot better and it's not missing when you rev it up now it's just revving up straight away it's not spluttering at all which is means it's going on all cylinders so there is a little bit of top end noise there what I think it could probably benefit with is another oil change to be honest another big oil change some more 2050 in it and maybe you know if you had the time you'd pull these off and you, you, you do you know possibly a little bit of a better job than I just did but it's quietened it right down and I'm sure that's now firing again so um, let's put this belt back on put the alternator back on um, we'll run her up again and then I want to see if we can drive her out and everything's you know working 
in terms of brakes and clutch, which is a big thing. But the engine sounds, you know, sounds okay. That gasket looks like an old beer map. Cool. Right. She's just ticking over nicely. She sounds really good. Now I'll put a new fuel filter on and a bit of new fuel hose to get rid of that. I don't know, garden hose, whatever it was. Um, and it sounds pretty good, you know. It doesn't sound amazing, but it sounds pretty good. Annoyingly though, I did just notice that the brake fluid was nearly empty. Now I think it's leaking out of the bottom of where the trap meets that, so I'm going to have to, I don't know, pull the brake fluid back out of it and try and put a new O-ring on it or something, but that's a bit of a pain. But so far so good with all of this, I'm just going to let it run, get some heat into everything, make sure we're not overheating anywhere, you know, make sure everything's good, everything's working as it's supposed to. I've just tested the battery and we've got 14 volts, so I know the alternator's really good. So we're just going to let her idle and just put all my tools away, put the wheels back on and we'll see if she moves. The wheels are back on, there's three bolts on each one, that's normal isn't it? Drop the bonnet, kick the ramp out, and let's see if she drives out, you know, with the clutch and brakes and all that, you know. Oh, nice to be able to shut the bonnet then. Well, that was pretty trouble free, doesn't it sound nice? Everything seems to work, we've got brakes, we've got clutch. Brakes, still not, they work, but something's going on. I need to have a little think, something's not 100%, but they're, they're working and they're, they're lots of brake power, but if you leave it, pedal's sinking all the way again. So I need to find out what's gone on there. Let's go for a little spin, shall we? Okay, right, so, engine, gearbox, I wonder if the wipers are working today, oh no that's the washers, that's the back wiper, <laughs> I can't believe that's the works, no front wipers, just reverse it everywhere, okay, we are cooking, oh, it's so nice to drive this with a clutch and brakes, oh, Let's just remind ourselves of what it was like coming back from Tamworth. A little status report for you. Currently 12 miles away, which is good. Got no rear lights or front lights. Um, and I've got no wipers. So my view's not great, especially when it rains. I'm just stopping for the uh fourth time to fill up with brake fluid because i think one of the rear wheel cylinders has decided to leak and uh i've never been so cold in my life should have been home hours ago Engine's running really well though, no clutch at all, so I've got to start it in gear and just drive it in gear. Um, anything else? Yeah, lorry's scary in the dark like. Um, but that's it, let's see if I can make it back another 12 miles.
this engine feels really good. Definitely feels like it's firing on all. How many has it got? Four, five, six, six cylinders? So we are working. And the brakes are there. I just leave them, you know. Let the next person worry about that. Everything's working. God, it drives nice. Don't, not keeping it, not keeping it. Not keeping the car. Oh, Charles is up here, let's go have a word. Just said hello to Charles there. Very nice. All the horses have come back to life. Second gear, third gear. Oh man, it's nice on the clutch. It is really nice. <laughs> Back to first as well. The clutch does it down as well as up. What a time to be alive! How good's this headlining? I think it's got, you know, it could do with a wash, but it's all right. So we're getting there with this now. We need a few more things just to make it road legal you know like lights and you know make it look look a bit nicer I think, I think next we should probably throw this interior back together because I'm a little bit tired of seeing it like this you know should we go and see Dicky What do you think, old mate? <laughs> so we can't say fairer than that, can we? You know, I mean, it's driving, it's going, it's doing all right. Okay, the fan come on there. Engine sounds sweet enough to use while you can. Only thing that concerns me is we're idling a little bit low and a couple of other things like that. So I think it does need a little bit of a fine tune in places. And I just want to make sure the uh, we're getting enough volts through. But I think tomorrow we're going to get this interior back together, tidy everything up inside so we know where we are. And then we can start doing some, you know, other bits to the car. But I'm pretty happy with that today. We've got clutch, we've got brakes, and she's ticking over like a dream. Right. See you in day two. Day two on the scimitar of this particular episode. Uh, I was yesterday I wasn't on it, I was doing this Bentley Arnage. Isn't that a cool looking bit of kit, eh? Real smart thing. Worried about it getting up on the air in the ramps. About two and a half ton that car. Anyway. 6.7 litre twin turbo as well. Oh, lovely. Well, it's raining, it's cold, it's dark. I'm gonna do the interior. Uh, but first, we see if it starts up. Doesn't she sound well? Started up easily, ticking over nicely. So happy days. Right, I'm gonna roll it back a bit here into as much light as I can without getting wet. And we'll empty you out, see what's inside it. That wasn't bad after being sat for two days, was it? Right. First thing though, just scrape that across the roof. Um, let's put all this stuff back on now that we know that engine's Sweet enough, do you know what I mean? What a strange design, isn't it? I had a spoke as well. Broken, but kind of still works, do you know what I mean? 
could be worse, couldn't it? Still some in that, keep that, still some in that, keep that, go. Big ass spare wheel. Yeah. Still got a bit of air in it. Keep that with the car. So when the uh, <coughs> wheel fell off, that's what happened to the GTE badge when the wheel fell off, you know. So I've got crushed. Probably throw that away. Quick here, route, and that's probably job done for the back, isn't it? Right, what have we got? Parts. Windscreen wiper, cigarette lighter. There's my parts tray. Just put that there. It's no metal, it's not magnetic. Erm, um, what's next? Right. You would not believe your eyes with six million cable ties. Uh, what's next? Uh, lovely misshapen door cap. Not in bad luck. Sort of parcel shelf type thing. Pop that in later. Simic Rovers Club National Rally sticker from 1991. How cool. Door handle. What looks like a... Oh, that's my old one, yeah. I tried to change the flasher. For the indicators, like a relay, but French. The old clutch pipe. Some more spark plug paraphernalia. Oh, yes. All the screws that we need for bits. That's cool. The interior's in surprisingly good condition in this. Carpets and stuff. Bit of work, it would come up. Very nicely. Bye. So that's it, that's everything out of the interior. Now the only thing it needs is the door cards refitting, but also we've got a couple of problems. So this door doesn't want to work. Uh, it doesn't want to open from the outside. So I'm going to have a little look into that first and then I'll let you know what it was. Didn't take a huge amount of time to fix it. That was just I needed to needed to unlock it. Right. Oh, so refit the window winder, refit the door card. Simple as that. Doesn't it look fantastic? So we've seen this method before, haven't we? Not seen the G clamp though. That's a new one, but. Yeah, so that's on and everything's working nicely, but the it's got very, very old, loose uh, sort of poppers all over it. And I don't want to drill, because it's a really nice door card. I don't want to drill a load of, you know, self-tappers straight through it to hold it on. So I've glued the original, you know, poppers that were there and I'm just holding it all together. And I'm hoping that that's going to keep it all in one place, which would be nice, wouldn't it? But aside from that, the interior is kind of done. Not really a lot else we can do in here. It's quite sound, you know. It just needs a bit of a wipe down and a few little finishing touches. But, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty cool. I'm just going to get the Hoover out quickly now and just go over it in the boots. And then I'm going to have a look at the lights. How is how's this going? Okay. Square peg, round hole, can't see, when screw it away. Stupid thing, throw it in the bin. Oh, oh no, we're in. Ah, we're in. Come on. Here we go. That was easy. Okay, switch it off for this thing there. Pop this. Back in. I also checked and there's a jack and a brace in there as well. Which is good. Oh, nice, okay. And then my handle that back into place. It's like brand new. 
did forget about one thing though. This thing here. I'd like that to just sort of stay there. But that's kind of going to involve getting the. I forgot I could have put that one as well. Take the window out and. Tiny little connecting block here, which is broken. So I'll try to make it now so the pins don't fall out. Uh, easier said than done, you know. So we're looking good here. We've got these industry standard cable ties holding all that together, which is fantastic. That's going to last maybe an hour or two. Um, good news is though. You can open it from the outside. And from the inside. Hey, fantastic. Results. Bob's here. Look at this for the car. Whoa! Yeah. Nice thing. Right, stick all that back together. This thing's been held on with the industry standard sort of uh, line of tiger seal just to stop it rattling around you know moving uh, that's all built back up these uh, keep popping out that's what the other side was doing I'll uh, maybe put a touch of glue on those and that's it interior is done fabulous it's all coming together so just fitting new brake light switch now and Rob's just confirmed that the brake lights are moving that's what the old switch looks like very sad so stick all that together up in there. Love working up inside dashboards. Do a lot, don't I? Right, we have brake lights uh, on. Oh yes, off, on, off. Need brake pedal now. Hey, <laughs> okay. It's day three already. Incredible. Didn't have loads of time to spend on it yesterday, but what have we got done so far? So, clutch is working, the interior is back together, but we'll see how that door card's done in a second. Um, the brakes, I'm going to cross them out, but we may give it another little look in at some point. Um, so, we've got a few other little jobs to do. In terms of the lights, we've got everything working apart from the headlights and the indicators. And I've got an indicator stalk on its way. We've not got any flash or main beam. So I think that could be something to do with a stalk as well. So I've got one on its way. Hasn't arrived yet, but look what has arrived. What's in the box? Very nice. Look at this. Almost brand new looking mirror to replace this one. What ain't got a mirror in it? So we'll get that on very shortly. Uh, it doesn't quite look like it's the right way. That's fine. Yeah, we'll get that on shortly. Uh, what else? Yeah, let's see if this door card has worked. Right then, so we'll take this chap off first. Lovely, nice and easy. So far, so good. What a result. We are one piece again. Not flopping all over the world. Good, okay. So yeah, annoyingly that is completely the wrong one. <laughs> Great, uh, but we'll try, we'll make it work, you know. Uh, so uh, what's going on under here? Well, the good news is the master cylinder over there for the brakes is no longer leaking. So I'm gonna clean everything up today, top that up with fluid, and then maybe that'll help with the brakes, but I don't see how it would, but we'll, we'll get that sorted anyway. Um, but at least that's not leaking anymore. And I'll put a new couple of O-rings on it. Uh, but thing to do now, fire her up, get her outside and give her a wash, I think. And then we'll get her back on the ramp and start doing some weldy bits. What a thing. 
Oh, she's looking all right inside as well, you know. For an old scimitar, it's not bad. I've seen worse. Pretty good. Still dealing with these floppy things. I've got to go to see Graham Walker on uh, Monday. Just about a couple of bits inside there. I'm trying not to get what's so parked on the trailer there. Try not to get that in shot because it's the next Lep Dead project, which is very exciting. But yeah, need a new battery and stuff like that. So I'm going to go and see him next week and I'll see if he's got any of those door poppers, um, you know, if they exist. And I'll, I'll try and fit some new ones, see if that helps. But for now, let's give this thing another scrub. You don't need to see me do that. You've seen me do it before. She's had a lovely wash and doesn't she look glorious? Now, why have I got this bit of cloth on the front? Well, I'm going to show you what we're dealing with here. So, this paint is, it's pretty dead, you know, it's, it's just, it's the most, it's been parked outside all its life and it is incredibly faded to the point where I'm just, could be spending huge amounts of time trying to polish that up. So I've given you an example of what's going on here. So this patch here, I spent with the buffer and then the polish, and this is what we've got. And it just, it's still, it's just, yeah, it's not gonna come up nice. So what's the other options? What can we do? Because if I was to do that to the whole car, you know, we could be looking at a couple of days there. So. Wow, doesn't this bit look nice? So what have I done here? Well, it's a bit of a cheat. It's a bit of a sort of get out of jail free card for stuff like this. Not a perfect solution, but the paint is dead on this car. You know, there's, it's just, it wants like a real full respray. But for now, to get it looking good, what can you do? So couple of options but essentially you're just lacquering the thing and what that's going to do is it's going to put all the stuff back into the paint that it didn't have before and make it all shiny again and you know i like to get sort of maximum results minimum effort do you know what i mean just to sort of show the method a bit easier than on the roof um, where i can't get a good wide spray pattern so i'm, I'm possibly gonna have to get the guns out but this is what it looks like on the lower half of the front wing. And I mean, <laughs> it's pretty good, eh? <laughs> Look at the shine in it, you know? Such a huge difference. You know, and there's like zero prep involved there. You just sort of spray it on, you know what I mean? You know, if you sort of squint, you know, from your house, kind of, you know, behind a wall in the dark, it looks pretty good, doesn't it, you know? Really, really smart. <laughs> Rob's just tipped up to help me with the fifth attempt, I think, at these brakes, and they are kind of working now. We've got a proper pedal there. It's just because it's quite a long system, it doesn't have a bleed on that corner there it's the other side it's just it's got a huge route to go through so you've got to get all that air out so it takes ages but we've done it we've got a proper break which is exciting um and now i'm going to tackle these crusty bits so uh get the welder out cue the music
as I've said before, this is not a how-to channel. I don't want to hear any welding experts in the comments, you know. This is a case of how to not get pulled by the coppers. Do you know what I mean? You strengthen that up, you make it look good. From the roadside, he goes, oh yeah, nice, yeah. See that, he's got nice, nice outriggers there. We're not going to give him any grief. But that is nice and solid. It's all tied together. Fantastic. That's job done. And then, you know, when someone decides what they want to do with this car, if they want to do a, take the body off and sort of repair it all properly, put some new outriggers on it and sort of, you know, give everything a good going over, then they can. But for now, this just keeps it on the road, you know, keeps these wheels moving. Oh yeah, also let's hear it for our little Yu-Gi-Oh van friend there that's, ah, he's, he's been uh, holding it in the right place for us. Very, very kind of you. Put that back on the shelf there. Don't know where the hell that's come from. Okay, just gonna spray a load of Schultz over everything there and then we'll do it on the other side. She's looking all right. Not too shabby. Bit more Schultz on that in a week. Gotta get a couple more bits, but overall, you know, pretty happy with the progress today. It's nice seeing what the lacquer can do. So I'll get some more of that in the week. A few more other bits to sort out. But yeah, so we're looking at, um, Monday now, probably get most of the stuff done. Wiper motor, that sort of thing. We can tick a lot of other bits off the list. Weld the other side up as well. Um, and then that's it. So I'll see you in about three seconds. Day five. Hang on, what happened to day four? Unfortunately, yesterday, uh, forgot to bring in my camera equipment, but that's fine because I didn't do huge amounts on it yesterday anyway. What we did do was finish welding the outriggers on both sides, um, polished the wheels up. I went out to town, went to see Graham Walker for the, the, the scimitar place, got a new wiper motor, got a uh, set of wipers, some wheel bolts, some door card clips, a few little bits out which we're going to finish off today and another super exciting thing which I've never done on a car before and I'm excited to show you and we'll learn together and we'll see what it looks like. Um, but yeah, so I spent the day going with the cans, making it look, you know, half decent. It looks all right and it's, you know, it saved it from all the paint sort of coming off in big chunks like it was doing and hopefully is going to make it last a little bit longer. And if you were to park it in a car park, it looks half presentable like whereas before, you know, as you can see in this before shot, didn't look too great, you know? Well, you know, if, a, if a, you drove past a copper, he may may think you've just drug that out of a tree hedge, you know? Uh, whereas this looks like you care, a bit at least, you know? So today we're gonna carry on with that. I've just got a few little jobs first. I wanna finish off polishing up some of the metal and giving the windows a wipe down because <laughs> weirdly there's a little bit of overspray on them. I don't know where that's coming from. A little bit of thinness is coming off, it's fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna go through the rest of it and just do a couple of little bits first and then we'll get stuck into today's jobs. So you can watch me do that now. And while that's happening, I'm gonna just say a massive thank you to all the new subscribers and the old subscribers as well. You're all coming with me on this journey, man. You know, it's pretty mad, isn't it? We're sort of like at 12,000 subscribers or something. Now it was only 10,000 the other day. So that's dead exciting, isn't it? And you all really like the Panard video, which is good because I really like the Panard. And the reason the Simit is getting sold is so I've essentially got the money to pay for the bits that I'm going to do to the panard, you know, um, I, I need to sort of have those funds in the bank for when some French guy sort of wants to charge me 200 euros for a distributor cap. So yeah, that's why the scimitar is going, but I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that panard because it is something a bit different. It's a bit of a challenge, you know, and I do like a challenge, but yeah, you're all super cool. Really, really appreciate you supporting me i love your comments your, your comments are so so good learn a lot from you you know there's some real sort of uh, guys that do know a lot and girls that do know a lot out there and you you're just sharing your wealth of knowledge with everybody um and it's it's just great to see and i love your support really really helpful 
Um, and it just spurs me along, you know, makes me want to do more. I want to do more, more cars, more things. And yeah, we've got some great videos coming up soon. So uh, we've got a new Left for Dead, which is just, yeah, can't wait for that thing. It's going to be super cool. Now, this is probably the last day I can really spend on this simulator. You know, I've, I've, five days is, is too long, really, to, to spend on it, because there's not going to be a, a huge amount of money in this car, unfortunately. It's, they're, not, they're not worth a huge amount, and this does still need a load of work. You know, this is just a quick get-it-out-the-door kind of restoration. It's, you know, I've not really done a lot. I've just got the basics going, but then, you know, the new owner can now improve on them. But I've got it there, you know, I've saved it. It could have been split for parts, this thing. And as you know, we don't like to do that. But now I've finished doing all that, let me show you some of the bits that I did yesterday. So I don't know if you can see in there, but the outrig is done on there. We've got new wheel bolts on, you know, where the old wheel bolts had um, magically disappeared. And yeah, that one in there as well, give that a good weld up just on the other end over there so again if you get stopped by the rosers they're gonna sort of be like yeah it's fine whatever it's okay it looks good god blimey look at that doesn't look good why is it so dusty it's like been here for like two minutes but yeah it's looking pretty swell guys now, there's a lot of this stuff going on, but we've got a, we've got a little trick for this. Now, this bit here, there's no getting away with how ugly that looks. It's pretty sad. Now, I was thinking, what can I do about this? Because it's just a huge blight on the car. The little scabby bits around the edge, you're kind of like, yeah, whatever. You could even touch those up with a touch-up stick if you wanted to, to take your eye off them. But this, ah, this is pretty bad. So I had to think, and I was like, what shall I do for it? And this is what I've come up with. We're going to turn this into... God, look at it, it's just, things just slide off it, it's so shiny. This is going to be a Reliance Viper. Um, right, instructions, which we'll, we'll definitely be ignoring. And the idea is, is to cover as much of it as I can with these stripes here. Won't this look good? Yeah? And the cool thing is, is they're body coloured. So it's going to be subtle stripes. It's not like I'm sticking, you know, yellow stripes up it or something. Body coloured. It's going to look so subtle, you know? Uh, so, what I think I need to start doing is having a little bit of a measure, a little bit of a cut. So let's crack on. I don't, I've never done this before. How is it going to be easy? Is it going to be hard? Why are these sticking up? So, first of all, we're going to sort of go, we're going to do the bonnet first because that's the most, you know, tough bit. So we're just going to roughly put a little mark in there. Is this how, is this how you're supposed to do it? I think you're supposed to have like a workbench. Okay. Okay, right, so I'm gonna throw this on over here. What a lovely noise. So what we'll do is we'll like stick it down. What does it say? The mats must be thoroughly clean, free of oils, waxes, dust and dirt. Yeah, okay. Temperature, well, okay. Uh, backing paper, yeah. Vinyl, but yeah. Flat surface, applicator provided. This looks like an old credit card. I think I've got a better one than that. Slightly better one. I've not done this before, so I don't know where that's come from. It has just occurred to me that obviously if we stick it over this, it's going to be quite bumpy, so I'm probably going to have to take a little bit of this back. OK, 
exactly. That's kind of flat. It's as flat as it's going to get. So I guess you just like stick it on and hope for the best. What about like measuring and stuff? Just eyeball it in it. Yeah. So you can count those at one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Beautiful, yeah, great. And just space that equally there. Cool, okay. And then um I'm making this up as I go along, can you tell? How do the professionals do it? I don't know. Anyway, we should stick this bit down, I think, properly. So how do I keep this in a straight line now, while I'm peeling that thing back? Do we just go for it? This feels like it's not going to go well. Okay, whoa, that's sticking. Ah! Okay. Okay. How do I know when that's in the middle? When, when, uh, yeah, yeah. So if I do it like that, I can have a better eyeball. Yeah, okay, that's kind of cool. So we just use this now and do this, I think. Imagine how good this is going to be if it works. So I guess there's no going back now. Side ones should be fairly straightforward, shouldn't they? Who whipped this one? Now it says walk away for five minutes, let the glue do its thing, but I kind of want to peel it off straight away. Feels nice though, yeah, feels like this could be, yeah, could be alright. Might go make a quick cup of tea. Ah, it's hot. Right then, it's been roughly five minutes. Let's just start by slicing this thing off. Okay, uh, we'll keep that. We could use it for some touch-ups. Uh, and um, this one's looking good. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. Have I done a good thing? creases in this. Why is there creases in it? Shouldn't be any creases in it. Okay, 
I mean, it's kind of better than it was, isn't it? Right then, let's just cut these bits back here. And you can see, obviously, the outline of where all that white was. It has covered it quite nicely. Obviously, there's this patch here, but it hasn't. Would it, if I got the heat gun on it, would it fix these bits? Should we find out? So what do you think? Tell me in the comments, do, do you think that was the best thing I've ever done or do you think that was the worst thing I've ever done? Just you let me know, you know, and then we'll sort of go from there. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that. It's got rid of the big hole from a distance. You know, let's go over here, look. From a distance, it looks amazing. Do you know what I mean? And I can supply the rest of the stripe for the new owner to, to fit if they if they like it and if they think that's the way to go, you know. But yeah, it could be worse. The more I look at it, the more I'm kind of okay with it, you know. So I've just checked the list and we've only got a couple of things left battery and the windscreen wipers now we haven't got indicators so it's arm signals for the time being that is i'm going left and just that is i'm going right i think from olden times before they had semaphores and indicators so uh yeah we're going to get stuck into the wipers and the battery now indicator stalk hasn't arrived and this is kind of the last day I can spend on this. So uh, when that arrives, I'll just put it in the car and the new owner can do the indicators. Dead easy. Right, okay. Let's get cracked on with what's inside this box. Uh, wiper motor first. Uh, let's just take this battery off first. I've got tools for the everywhere at the moment, which is not ideal. been a very busy week though you know so I'm gonna look forward to um, that's not even tight okay looking forward to having a big old tidy up it's one of my favorite things to do after messing about with a car like this a line here is that for me Okay. Uh, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Roger. So anyone got your six and a half lying around anywhere? Nope. Uh. Ah. The cable looks pretty good. Decent, where's the new motor? Where's the God, I'm genuinely amazed at how this paintwork's come out just with rattle caps now. It could probably do with some more in places. I've not given it enough coats in places. But again, that's something the new owner could spend a bit of time doing just to brighten it up a bit, but I'm impressed by it. Uh, so what's got to come out of here then? What have we got to swap over? We've got to go... We've got to, we've got to swap the whole wheel over. Right, crikey, okay. Well, good job. That's still in good condition, isn't it? Uh, right, so where should we start? Let's get the unit out, I think. A couple of 12s, 13s.
really handy when everything's covered in such a thick layer of grease, you know. It just makes everything really easy and pleasant and enjoyable to work on. So we'll pop that out and we'll just leave it there. Oh God, what was that? Where was that supposed to go? Okay. another clip on the back there to take this wheel out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do this over at the bench where it's a little bit safer I've had to take my cap off because I was trying to keep at least one clean you know for if I go to a restaurant and um, it was getting it dirty because of all the grease so I've took it off uh, right then let's pop all this back together I don't need that plastic thing because this one's got one so I imagine that just all slots back into there very straightforwardly. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay, so that's all there, that's all there, that's all there. Super great, okay. So we'll pop this back on there in a second. Let's just get it back in its holster. Nice, nice. Right, let's put this on and try and remember where everything goes, yeah? If we can, please. Can you see it? <laughs> well, you couldn't do this in a modern car, could you? Yeah. Got you. Right. Go on there, like so. Ah, right, this is a little 038 battery, which fits into the inner wing. Fantastic. That's what we were after all these years. So, uh, should we see if these wipers work then or what? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Uh, okay, let's have a go. Press the button. didn't go completely according to plan did it <clears throat> what, what a car what a car it's just I love it everything about it it's great so it didn't work so I've done a little bit of investigating and it turns out that we're just a little bit too seized inside the little worm cable and possibly the wheel boxes so I've covered them in a multitude of plus gas and I'm hoping they're going to come back to life and I'll show you why how I know that's the problem essentially so I've disconnected the little worm and as you can see the wipe remote is doing its job the switch is on in there but it's just not got the power when I connect everything up here to push that around the circuit I'll show you Okay, so I've reconnected the screw pipe. What, I don't know what it's called. 
I don't know what it's called. And as you can see, the wipers move a tiny little bit and then they get stuck. But if I give them a hand, they do move and they want to move, but there's just not enough go. Which is sad. As you can see, even with them, one of them up, still not getting that, uh, that movement, you know? You can see it kind of tries to push itself back, but it's free, it's freer than it was. And what I'm hoping is over time, this plus gas is going to settle in and it's going to free these wipers up and they will just start working of their own accord. But today, it's a sunny day, we don't really need them. So we'll put everything back together, give it a few more doses of this and we'll call that job, you know, finished as much as I'm going to do, but it's something for the next owner. At least it's been diagnosed and you've got a nice new motor. So good luck with, with that. Okay, so what now? Well, I'm just going to check the levels, oil, water, and I've got a handful of these little things so these are the bits that go inside the door card so i'm just going to do a couple of those once i've done that and then i think we should take it for a spin you know it's a nice day let's go and see what she's like on the road now that you know she's got a clutch she's got brakes she's got lights exciting not even going to touch the throttle <laughs> She's in rude health. Let's go. Yeah. Oh. God, it's warm today. Oh, perfection. Are you comfortable in the back? Okay. God, the door's shut so well, that man. Poppers keep falling out. The fix didn't work. got my boots on again today so there is a chance that I'm, my feet might get caught in the pedals and we might die It'd be a shame wouldn't it we've come on so far I'll use that one uh, do you remember this from last time fucking thing uh, uh. Oh, that's a... Oh. God, I love this car. Right, brakes. Yep, they're there. Got a mirror. Cool. There's a mirror here. Got a clutch as well. That's nice, isn't it? Got a clutch. Like a real car. Stereo still work? Leadership candidate Ash Regan has called on Scotland's new First Minister, Hamza Youssef, to take decisive action to restore trust after the arrest of the party. Fantastic, it still works. Okay, right there, no. Pushing my clutch foot into the firewall. Where should we go then? I've got an idea. I think we should take it somewhere that fits in with its surroundings, you know? Nice, we're motoring. 
first stop though, petrol station. or not, it should be reading more than that. I did test it with a multimeter and it is like 13, 14, so I don't know what's happening there. There was that wire off the back of the alternator there, wasn't there? I remember that. Should we go through Tarpley? Shoot. I can't believe the rev gauge and the speedo works, that's brilliant. I wish it drove like this on the way to bloody Tamworth. It is the same car, I promise. is good isn't it? Confident that nothing's gonna smash into you.
Oh, what a gorgeous day. What a beautiful little spot. This is great here. It's so nice and quiet. Nobody around. I wish I could park this outside the castle, but it's up on the hill and I can't, it won't let you. Can't do it, not allowed. Sad. But that's it, we're done for the last episode on the scimitar. It's time for it to go up for sale now and find someone that hopefully is gonna give it the love and attention it deserves. And don't get me wrong, you know, it, it, it needs a full resto. This thing needs a ground up restoration. It's got now a lot of nice new parts. Everything works kind of, you know, there's still a few little jobs to do. All the tires and stuff are good. The engines, you know, it's all right. You know, you could probably do with spending a little bit more time on it really just to get it properly nice the interior is complete it's decent you know we've made a nice little car out of this i think i think we have it was great driving it over then you know it's just it drove perfectly nothing untoward at all just really good and i hope you've enjoyed watching this whole mini series on the scimitar i've got to be honest i like to be honest at all times it's done my head in. It's done my head in, like from start to finish. It's just been like one of those cars that everything you touch, like with the wipers and stuff, everything you touch kind of goes wrong um, and scuffs all your knuckles and stuff while you're doing it. The brakes, God, what a nightmare of a thing getting those right, you know. Uh, but they're there now, you know. So yeah, it's been a bit of a been a bit of a slog this one. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to moving it on so someone else can enjoy it really and I think it looks great you know with a little tss 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 rattle can I think it's come up really well still a few sort of flat spots there just needs a, a couple of other coats but yeah really good really really good and I hope you've enjoyed watching and if you have enjoyed watching please hit the subscribe button hit the like button leave me a comment let me know what you think you know and uh, yeah I mean, we can't restore them all, do you know what I mean? And this car needs, a, 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 you know, going to be completely straight with you, a body off restoration. You've got to go through the whole thing. It needs everything doing, you know, but it's a good basis. It's a good basis to start with and you could drive it and improve it over time. But yeah, my work here is done. On to the next one. So I'll see you for that, I suppose. Bye.